Hey landlords, one of the most popular questions that new real estate investors ask is how do I find the right general contractor? This question is like a big question and I'm sure that you're wondering. So we're gonna cover that in this video today, but before we get into this, subscribe to the channel because I got hundreds of videos for you. And also I have a download for you, but we're gonna get into that in a minute, but make sure you check out this download. Let's crush this. Oh, hey, what's up? I'm so glad you got here just because I was actually just in the middle of researching a new contractor and researching his license to make sure it is actually active. So I want to tell you about researching a new contractor, especially since I'm always looking for new contractors. I'm going to give you three tips. The first tip to effectively research a new contractor is to network. I know many of you are introverts and networking is a lot of hard work, but the reality is it's something that you're going to have to do, but it doesn't require a whole lot of your time. The reason that you want to network is because that is where you're going to meet people who will potentially be resources for you to link you to new contractors. And by networking, I mean, join Facebook groups, join meetups, real estate meetups, and you can also join the Better Than Success Real Estate League. And these groups are designed so that people can share resources, right? So you want to make sure that you're in as many groups as possible and maybe fit in your schedule, um, you know, just chatting in there, being active or potentially finding people and maybe actually physically going to meet up now that the world is open. And as you start building your database of real estate friends, they will be likely to share resources with you. The reason that it really kind of has to go this way is because most real estate investors don't like to share their contractors. Why do they not like to share their contractors? Because contractors are super scarce right now. And the last thing that someone wants to do is once they find a good contractor, put them onto a bunch of other people. So now their contractor is spread thin and they're not being a good steward over their job. So people tend to actually only share good contractors with people that they might like, know, and trust. And guess what? You're going to be joining groups. So people are going to now like, know, and trust you. So it's imperative for you to be active in these groups post. You don't have to make it your full-time job, but you want to be in there and making sure that you're building relationships to find new contractors. So the next tip to finding a good contractor is you want to make sure that you check their credentials. You want to check and make sure that they have an active license and that they their insurance is active. Key word here is active. Let me tell you a story. I hire a contractor. I say, hey, send me over your license and your insurance. And then through happenstance, I later find out that their license is not actually active anymore. But the paperwork that they sent me three months ago said that it was active as of maybe six months prior. Or their insurance paperwork says, hey, this says that you started your policy six months ago and your policy, you know, you started this policy. But guess what could have happened within that time frame? They could have not pay, been making their monthly payments on their insurance or their insurance lapse. And then usually, depending on the municipality, they want to see up-to-date paperwork with your insurance. And so if they don't have insurance and then it's time to renew your license, you won't be able to renew your license. Like the contractor won't be able to renew their license. So you're going to actually have to do a little more work other than just say, hey, send me the paperwork. You're going to actually have to call the insurance company to make sure that it's actually active. Yes, the insurance company will do that, especially once you get the paperwork, you have the insurance policy number, you have the contractor's name or their company, they will do that. That's their job. And then here's the other part. This is where the download below is going to be really, really important to you. Most municipalities have a website that you can check to see if someone's license is active. You don't have to log in or anything. It's public information. So once that contractor sends over their license, usually I know for Philadelphia, there is a license number associated with their license. You go to the website that's in the download below. You're going to take that license number 
and you are going to paste it in there and it will immediately spit back and say this person's license is active or not active right so what i did was i actually made a download for you of the websites for 22 major cities in the u.s where you can actually find this resource to check on their license some municipalities have it some don't but i'm going to compile it we've compiled it as good as possible as a resource for you to actually search in the area that you are actually investing in okay so once you do that then you will have a better understanding hey is this person actually legal like if something actually happens at my project will they be able to cover it will their insurance be able to cover it and am i not out here running a dangerous work site okay so the third tip for finding a good contractor is to visit three at least three active work sites that they have now i know your question is what if they don't have any work sites if they don't have any work sites going on right now like right now we're in this recovery environment of COVID 2022 and if someone doesn't have any work sites going on right now i am here to tell you that that is not a contractor that you want to hire right now is so busy every contractor is up to here in their work if there is a contractor that can't find work, he's probably not that great, right? If he doesn't have anything active. So you wanna visit their work sites, not look at pictures, okay? I'm gonna tell you another story. I have a friend who is a general contractor and guess what was happening? Her pictures were being stolen from other contractors on the internet to post to their Instagram pages. Hello? So you don't want to run into that contractor who's stealing other contractors' pictures and saying that their pictures, their, their pictures are theirs. What you want to do is visit the work sites. Now, here are the three different types of work sites you want to visit for this contractor. One, a work site that is completely under construction. Framing is up. That's it. Framing. Another work site with mechanicals in. Ideally, you want to get, you want to see framing with the mechanicals, with the HVAC, the plumbing, and electric, it before the sheetrock goes up, so you can see what type of stuff they got going on. The things you want to look at in these two sites of project is, right? You're not a contractor, so you don't really know if it's done right, but you want to make sure that everything looks clean. The work site is clean. The floor is clean of debris. A lot of times bad contractors, they will run really dirty work sites. I've had that happen to me with a contractor that I had before. They were a bad contractor and every time I went through or someone else went through, it was a freaking mess. It was nuts. It was nuts. And I don't want that to happen to you. And they ended up being a bad contractor. And the reality is uh, OSHA, which is the governing body that governs the contractors, uh, the licenses, or the testing for the licenses, they require that you keep the work site clean for safety purposes. So it's not just for, hey, is this contractor good? But you also want to make sure that they actually run a safe job site, okay? So you want to look and make sure everything is done clean. It's a clean work site. You also want to see how the guys are interacting with each other, like make sure that it's not a whole bunch of nonsense going on or gals, guys or gals, doesn't matter, you know, whoever. Um, and so you want to be looking at this. And the last type of work site you want to visit is a done work site, something that is done, something that is like really, really close to being done. Uh, cabinets are in, tile is in, fixtures are in, something that is just looking really, really shiny. And for obvious reasons, you want to see, can they get this work, this job to the end? And then also like what I will typically do is I may just kind of like, spark up general conversation with some of the team members just to verify that this person is actually the GC because sometimes GCs will do sub jobs on other projects but claim it as their that's their general contracting job right so you might want to say hey you know hi how you doing uh, me I know how to like make jokes oh my god that looks really good you like working for this guy is he a good guy you like working for him right crack jokes like that <laughs> and so like if he's really working for me i'd be like no man he's horrible you know as a joke because they typically jerk on joke on work sites but if they're like huh what you talking about i don't work for him 
That's a big thing, right? So these are the things you might want to do to verify that this contract is actually GC on, GC on the project and also that they are running a tight shit, okay? So I want you to download below because you absolutely need to verify whether their license is active or not. It's so easy for contractors to get away with not having an active license, but sending you old paperwork or doctored paperwork. It's really easy to doctor the paperwork. As a previous graphic designer, like in my former, former life, it's easy to doctor the paperwork. So like you need to make sure that you can verify this with the municipality. So download the download below that gives you the list of resources for 22 cities on how to verify the actual contractor's license. All right, so now you are equipped with the knowledge to find a good contractor. Now, here's the thing. Once you get really, really good at this, finding good contractors, guess what you're going to do? You're going to want to then become a contractor yourself. You're going to want to become a GC yourself and GC your own projects, right? That's life. As soon as you get good at something, now is the next level. But I have a resource for you. I got a bunch of resources for you. I got a video down below. The link is down below on how to become a GC if you're a real estate investor. And then also there is another download, right? So every municipality works differently and sometimes the state works differently for how to become a GC. You're gonna watch this video and this video walks you through how to do it on in Philadelphia. But then down below, you're also going to get the link to the resources for 22 major cities, how to do the same thing, but you need to know the basic process. So you're going to watch the video and then map it out for the equivalent for your city using the download links, the links in the download for your city. I know it's a lot, but it's really easy. I know I'm here I'm making it easy for you. So get your download subscribe to the channel get your download subscribe to the channel and i am out